Up now in the Fox Report, a happy place. The Fox News political insiders are here in South Carolina. Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor. Here in the studio with me, John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman for New York, and Doug Schoen, former pollster for President Bill Clinton, and a Fox News contributor as well. So we have you covered. And the hot topics we want to get to include the current state of the 2016 presidential race, of course, Donald Trump's plan to weather what he says will be a, quote, massive recession. He's talking economy and policy. And we'll talk foreign policy as well, particularly against the Islamic State savages. I want to begin with some fast math that I sure. did before I came on air tonight. And that was the 501 delegates that Donald Trump would need to get, John, to that 1237 to clinch the nomination. It's not impossible. It's possible. And John Roberts said earlier this hour, could very well be probable. Your thoughts? I don't think it's probable. I think it's possible. And it's based on what we think will happen. Pat, Doug, and I talked this morning. We think it's likely that Trump does not win Wisconsin on Tuesday. The polling is consistently behind. Does that matter all that much? Oh, yeah. Because in this one, he might only end up with three or six delegates mm -hmm. uh, out of Wisconsin, which alters his math to make it where he would have to win 60% of the remaining delegates to get those 501. Okay. And Harris, there's another issue. John, I think, reflects uh, Pat in my view, but certainly Pat can speak for himself. But I certainly agree with John. And the problem that Donald faces, if in fact he loses Wisconsin, mm -hmm. is he starts losing momentum. He's been polling in the low fit to mid 50s in New York. He's likely to come down from that as Cruz and Kasich campaign here. Uh, Pennsylvania is also competitive. California is dead even. He's not going to get you on the 60 percent that uh, he'd need if he loses Wisconsin, if all of those trends play out, as I suggested. All right. One thing I want to bring up is this uh, tweet. David Wolverton uh, says this so nicely, so I'm going to work this into the conversation nicely because it segues us. Donald Trump needs to focus on his core issues, immigration, economy, jobs, national security, and the corruption of our politicians. Uh, Pat, I'm going to come to you. We saw a little bit of that today from Donald Trump as he started talking about a deep recession that could happen in this country. He started talking about bringing down uh, our debt and the trade deficit uh, that we have, uh, what we offer countries and what we get back, that sort of thing. Talking more economic policy. Well, I think he needs to do that. And he needs to get back on the issues that he touched that helped inflame, particularly the economy and the in the, and Washington, D.C., the corruption and so forth that he tapped into, that, and so has Bernie Sanders, that it were, where the population is inflamed. He faces a problem, however, with his own personal mistakes and personality. For several weeks, I've talked about the need for him to reach, to, to rise, to adapt to the threshold of, of uh, acceptability. Right now, he may have a threshold of viability and I, I know we wouldn't like to hear this, but if he loses Wisconsin, he's going to be under great pressure. And he's doing the mm. right thing on the issues, but he also needs to do something stylistically. You can't drive your negatives up in the general election this high. If he loses Wisconsin, which we all three think is more than likely, he will embolden those forces of the Stop Trump movement everywhere, and particularly the press, which has its fangs out for him. I just want to add, on the Stop Trump movement, the greatest spokesman for the Stop Trump movement has become Donald Trump. Why do you say that? Because this past week he got off the message. Well, the three of us have been mm -hmm. saying it well, directly on the camera here. With for all due weeks. respect, who has been exactly on message? I mean, it has Ted been Cruz. kind of. Do you think he has? Oh, yeah. You he don't never, think the wife thing went off ne message? No, he didn't that do wasn't it. him. That was it? that was somebody he, else other than the Cruz campaign. He Rest never sure. goes off message. Kasich never goes off message. Right. These guys are very disciplined. Mm -hmm. They're not exciting, but they're steady. Eddie, so why aren't they doing better across the board? Well, okay. Cruz is doing quite well across the board now. Cruz is the alternative to Trump. All the establishment who doesn't like Cruz has said, "All right, we'll hold our nose." And, and we'll he's go won with how many? How many delegates so far? How well, many states? He's in second I mean, place, that, that's what I say. And, and it's a it's a gap between him and Donald Trump. So my question is, is that what the voters want? I mean, well, I, I'm trying want, to figure out what it clear. is they want. The voters <laughs> want something other than what they're getting. Initially, because of Trump's plain speaking, anti-corruption, anti-immigration message. 
they flock to him. Mm -hmm. Carson benefited from something similar, and Cruz, who's the ideological conservative, also benefited. But candidly, if we sit here, I think the polling has shown 40 to 50 percent of the Republicans want somebody else, which raises yeah. the possibility of a new candidate potentially at the so, convention. I want to share this with you because you make a, an interesting point there. So Donald Trump has been steady at 30 percent and average. Uh, across the polling since February. As others have dropped out of the race, he has remained at about 30 percent. But John Kasich and Ted mm. Cruz have gone up. Hello. Pat, why do you think that is? <laughs> well, it, that depends on where it is. That is not the case everywhere. He has actually risen in his national poll numbers. And he got, you know, in Florida, look what he got. He almost got 50 percent. He's gotten, uh, but however, in a place like Wisconsin, he's been at 30 for months. The problem is, converting new people. And mm -hmm. as I've said, he needs to, there are many, many people attracted to his message and the hope of change. He reversed his negatives originally in the fall and he is in the Republican Party. He has now allowed them to creep up and particularly explode among independents and Democrats. But remember, a lot of voters have not participated in the primaries. Eighty percent of America's voters who will vote in November are not participating in these primaries. That's an excellent point. Yeah. So, so, so John, he's got to, you got to move them. I have heard you say that the GOP are out to ruin Donald Trump. Why? I think, I think what's happened now and is happening this weekend in Tennessee at their state convention today in North Dakota, last week in Louisiana, under the radar, the party establishment is picking off delegates to be anti-Trump. They set this thing up where party regulars are going to be the delegates. They are not for Trump. Is they're, that right? And is that thinking, fair? Well, whatever. It's right. It's what it is. It's politics. Their thinking it's is politics. we are going to ruin Trump before he ruins the GOP. That's their thinking. And you call it politics. It's politics because they're scared of an unprecedented no. blowout in November yeah. given the high negatives John Excuse was me. speaking about. Pat? Yeah, let me explain, because there are some particulars of this. And no, it's not fair, because we live in a democracy. The political class believes its job is to rig the rules in both parties to make sure the American people do not have a say. And what they are trying to do now is turn over elections. They only allow in the Republican Party, unlike the Democrats, candidates in most states have no control over their delegates. They're electing these far phony uh, uh, Trojan horse delegates for Trump who will wow. vote for him in the first ballot, but who on these rules challenges and others, like Rule 40, which is the question of who, how many people can be nominated, all those things on credential and rules, they will vote against Trump no matter what Trump wants. And the American people, the people who voted for Trump, will explode over this, and many Americans unhappy with Trump Harrison. will be angry because they believe they are being screwed by the Washington politicians, and they're right.